Hello everyone, this is Ashley Tucker. Thank you for joining me today. Today I'm sharing a simple shaker card design using a new stamp set from My Favorite Things. This stamp set is called Friendly Foxes and it came out today in My Favorite Things brand new release. So I picked out three from the four foxes that come in this set and I put them in my Misty tool and then I stamped them with Gina K Designs Jet Black Amalgam Ink onto some Nina Classic Crest Solar White cardstock. I'm going to be coloring in these three little foxes using my Copic markers. And like always, I do have my marker caps off to the side there so that you can see the colors that I'm using. Now for each of these three different foxes, I tried to use some different colors of Copic markers so that each one of them is a little bit unique. For this first little fox, I decided to use a few red colors and actually the lighter color is a little bit more on the pink side and I actually really like the way that these colors work for a fox. Now I didn't have a shade in between these two colors and they're a little bit far apart. So in order to get a nice blend, I did have to touch the tip of the lighter shade marker to the tip of the darker marker so that I could blend easier. I use that technique quite often because I'm still growing my Copic collection. For the white area on all of the foxes, I decided to use a warm gray. And like I said before, I'm still building my Copic collection. So the lightest color of warm gray that I have is the W3. So in order to get a nice transition between that W3 and the stark white of the paper, I decided to take my colorless blender and just kind of dab the edge of the marker area. And that kind of fades it into the white. For this second fox, I'm going for the more traditional orange colored fox, but I am using a red color in order to do my darkest shading on this fox, and I really like the way that that looks. Here you'll see how I typically color when I use my Copic markers. First, I pick a section and I fill it in with my lightest shade marker. Then I take my medium shade marker and I block out my shadowed areas. And then I take my dark shade marker and I fill in those deepest shadowed areas. And usually those darkest shadows are not very much. You don't wanna go overboard with that darkest marker. Just a hint of it goes a long way. The next step is to go backwards through the markers. So after I finish with the darkest color, I then go back to the medium shade marker and I blend out between the darkest shade and the medium shade. And then I go to the lightest shade marker and I blend out in between the medium shade marker and the lightest shade marker. And I don't know if you noticed this, but when I was coloring the body on this fox, I did go out of the lines just a little bit with that orange color, but that's okay. If it's just a little bit, it's usually not a problem. In order to fix that, you take a colorless blender and you color over the area you want to get rid of. And what you want to kind of do is push that color towards where you want it to go. And that usually helps as long as it's not too much. This last fox is also going to be an orange fox, but he's going to be a little bit lighter than the second fox. I really love this little fox and how he's wearing that really big tie. When I do color in this tie, you'll see that I do add my own pattern to it. I just added some simple polka dots. Sometimes it's fun to add your own little personal touches to an image, and for something like a tie, it's really easy to add some simple stripes or some polka dots. I used the coordinating dies to cut those images out and then I moved on to creating some backgrounds. These are really simple backgrounds. They took me hardly any time to create. I'm making three shaker cards, one for each of those foxes that I colored in. So I'm going to need three of these backgrounds. I decided to do two different colors of Distress Oxide ink on each of these backgrounds. So I picked out my colors. I'm doing a purple background, a green background, and a blue background. The purple one, I used Shaded Lilac and Seedless Preserves. The green one, I used Cracked Pistachio and Lucky Clover. And for the blue one, I used Tumbled Glass and Peacock Feathers. To start out each of these backgrounds, I first took the lighter of the two colors and I blended an area big enough for my shaker area. 
I then took a polka dot stencil from My Favorite Things and I taped it over the top and I took my darker color and I blended starting at the bottom and working my way up and I faded it out towards the top by adjusting the pressure that I was using while I blended. Finally, to finish up the background, I lifted up the stencil and I added some more of that darker color very lightly along the bottom and I used a very gentle pressure for this. To create the front panels of my shaker cards, I took an A2 size piece of Nina Classic Crest Solar White cardstock, and I took my nested circle die set from Hero Arts, and I cut a circle out of the top of each of those panels. I then added a different sentiment from the stamp set to each of those panels using my Misty tool and my Gina K Designs Amalgam ink. To create my shaker windows, I used my ATG gun in order to glue a piece of acetate to the back of each one of these front panels. And I apologize that this is off camera a little bit. I took a piece of really long foam tape and I folded it in half so that it's twice as thick. And then I cut it down the center so that I have a really long piece of doubled up foam tape. And then I took the backing paper off of both sides of the foam tape so that I could wrap it around the shaker window. And I did this for each of the three panels. I added some really large clear glitter to my background panel and then I took my front panel and I closed up my shaker area. I didn't have to be too careful when I was placing this front panel because I knew that I would cut off any of the excess back panel hanging off of the sides. I used both my ATG gun and foam tape to adhere all of my front panels onto A2 size card bases. Next I took my three foxes and I used liquid adhesive in order to adhere them to the centers of my shaker windows. I like to use tweezers when I'm placing these foxes because I find that it helps me to place them more accurately. Once I had all of those placed, the last thing that I had to do was add some highlights and I took a white gel pen and I just used a combination of lines and dots along the edges of each of the images in order to make those highlights. After that, these cards were all done, and here's a closer look at each of them. These were really easy and simple shakers to create, and you could make these with lots of different images. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you really enjoyed this shaker card design using that new Friendly Foxes stamp set from My Favorite Things. All of the products that I used for these cards can be found in the description down below. If you enjoyed watching today and you're brand new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you can see all of my future videos. I do new card videos every single week and I'm going to be back with another one really soon. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all of you and I hope you have a good day today.